spine on one side so you can match up to another piece and uh, get the glue, make a glue sheet or whatever your purpose is. Right. So, this guy here, I love this plane. It's, it's fairly narrow. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, got, it's got a great edge on the, uh, on, on the iron. You, the you iron. never call them blades, they're always called iron iron. for some reason. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's the whole thing is an iron piece. And yeah, so, 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 I mean, it is a blade, but provisions that you call iron. So, you know, I don't why. But anyway, so anyway, you want to give this a try. So this will, this, this here, of course, because it's trying to flatten this out, because it only hits the high spots. Right. But as you keep going, they'll keep coming down until you you got a nice uh, flat part. Press down very much. Oh, it's good. It'll just really yeah, kind of. somehow that one I, I managed to get perfect. I told I let very few people touch it. I don't You're special, touch baby. It. Yeah, that's my baby. It's really the one trick of flattening these for the benefit of your camera, as you know this, is start off the board. Mm -hmm. Okay, you feel the blade hit, the iron hit. All the way off the end. Okay. Most people they'll start like right here and pick up right here and then they got a bowl. Or they'll start back here and keep going, then they go out and move by the ski jump. Oh, okay. You know, so, so really... And not know how they got the ski jump. Yeah. And uh, there's a few tricks to these. Think of uh, cutting a uh, steak, cake, or bread. Mm -hmm. You know, you slice it with your knife. You don't shove your knife through it. Okay, it's the same thing with wood. Yeah. You want to slice. So most people usually go straight down the plank. Mm -hmm. What you want to do is go oh, at a slight man. angle. Now, now, most people, they'll, they'll straighten out as they go. Don't do that. Keep it going all the way down like that, and you're slicing it. Well, actually, it's easier. I'm going to give it a couple more little tricks. See, I just want to keep digging up the right there. Have it. And then, then one trick is to lock your arms and kind of, then kind of balance on your knees and hips, and then use your upper body weight. Okay. Rather than trying to muscle with your arms. And if you need some help, tighten your abs. And this is a, if you want to lose abs, this is the place to come. That'd work. If you said you had to tighten your butt, he's out of luck because he doesn't have any there to tighten. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot easier when you do it like that. Yeah. That's pretty neat. Yeah. So, I guess guys that work here, you know, we're demonstrating this to people all day long. Mm -hmm. So, June is like sore abs. Like, oh, this is like my 15th season, this is my 15th year of sore abs in June. <laughs> then after about three weeks or so, then you're fine. You know? Yeah. And then, of course, then you go until uh, fall harvest in October. Then after that, then there's nothing until maybe the animal day in mm -hmm. about April. April. So you're not using your abs. And you come back next year, it's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> so tomorrow morning, I'm going to be really tight. You know? yeah. <laughs> but it's just, just part of working here. You just, you just get that. Yeah. So there's no Richard Simmons needed here for the abs. <laughs> and, and I tell her, you know, everybody wants to lose just a little bit on the abs, right? Yeah. Okay. And so some of us want to lose a whole bunch. But everybody else. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, some of us could use, just, you know, yeah. some yeah. of others. But yeah, everybody wants to lose some. This is where you do it. So that's neat. Thank you. Thank you very and much. Check the other. This was made yeah. probably 1840s or 50s or so. Mm -hmm. 1840s? Wow. This one is 1832. So stamped into the, into the iron. Oh, so we jammed it up in here. Oh, well, I know what happened. Yeah, those kids that were in here just really... Dug into it. Yeah. Them. Yeah, so... But it, worked, it works great. I don't know. How interested are you in these? Very interested. Okay. We'll begin to get this a little further. Do you know how to get this, uh, how to adjust the uh, iron? No. You see people struggling, they'll, they'll, get, they'll try to force this out. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit like, it's not even too tight right now. They'll get a screwdriver and dig it out if it's not right. It's not even, it's tuck it under your arm. There's a couple ways to do this, but I always show people this way because it's the safest way. Just tuck it in your arm like this. Mm -hmm. Don't put your hand on, under here. Yeah, don't and don't stand with it over your, over your toe. <laughs> I know this, all right? <laughs> okay, these things go. Right out. Oh, wow. Yeah, think, think like when you, you probably uh, tighten the head on an axe before we hold yeah. it out. This one. Yeah. It's the same principle of inertia. So this is fairly light. This is heavy. You're just knocking it away from that. Okay. 
So then if you, that's that wedge. Yeah. So if you want to you can kind of give a little give a little bit of pressure there. Mm -hmm. And now if you want to adjust this, you start out with it too low. Right. So it won't cut in and just you can go both through okay, if you want to, to go deeper, tap tap on the front. If you want to go shallower, so what you do usually what I like to do is kind of if you have three hands, it's really good. Mm -hmm. Okay, just hold it up like this, kind of look down here, and just, in fact, if you look down there, you can see that okay. big rising. Yeah. Just get, and you want it just, okay, for a plane, typically for a normal plane, you want about paper thick. Right. For real fine work, like your finished planes, you want about onion skin thick. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you got this set where you want it, ready to go. And you got it. Okay, now this is all beat up here. We've had right. this about 15 years, and I've yeah. showed endless people yeah. you know, how to do this. So it's pretty, it's pretty nasty. Okay, and that, that's primarily what we use this for. If, you, if you're into an antique store somewhere and you see something like this, okay, you see this right here? Okay, what they did for the real expensive planes back in the day, this is probably 1840s, and this sold for about $8. Mm -hmm. Which in 1840 was, was like a week's wages. Yeah. It's like it's yeah. like buying a uh, a planer today. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're not we're not talking cheap junk here. Yeah. Okay. But what they did is they drilled a hole here and they got a piece of a dowel they put in there with a little bump on it. Mm -hmm. And so you whack on that dowel and you don't beat up beat up the end of your, your uh, plane. Mm -hmm. So I got this in Virginia, mm -hmm. and the guy uh, and I I knew this already. You know? The guys in the antique stores don't know this. Right. And he says, yeah, he says, Don, somebody broke the handle off there. He says, oh, yeah, okay, 60 bucks. I'll give you 40 bucks for it. It's not complete. Oh, he's like, okay. <laughs> yeah. so, well, there never was a was handle there. there. Yeah. Yeah. Just a little, and I got a second one the same way. I told you, hey, I'll, you know, I'll give you, you know, because that's all broke off. Yep. Oh, okay, okay. okay. It was never, and I've got a really nice one at home that's got a big brass plate right here. That's really, yeah. But that, that, that's and a lot of these. There's one one I have is called a Razi. It goes back and then it drops down like that mm -hmm. and sits down here. Uh, but what they were doing is in the 18 right after the 1830s, uh, you had a huge westward migration. Mm -hmm. Westward being uh, Ohio. Yeah, Ohio. <laughs> but people just pour in there, and so what they did. Is, uh, there was companies like Ohio Tool Company and some other ones that were making 50,000 planes a year mm -hmm. and they couldn't keep up with the demand because people build their yeah. long houses and stuff in Ohio and yeah. Illinois and you know, <laughs> Indiana and way out in the west. Way, way out west. Yeah. 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 Which in those days was pretty rough country uh, yeah. back then. But so what they did is they went to the uh, New York State prison system out of Rochester mm -hmm. and they contracted with the prison. To make the planes. planes. The idea is New York was going to make the prisons pay. Right. Just like you're always trying that today with yeah. about the same results. You know? <laughs> okay. yeah. Not working very So good. The, a lot of these, if they say Ohio Tool Company or uh, OTONS, O O T O N Z, I think is the name of the company. Anyway, mm -hmm. those are a prison name. And I've got one home that's prison name. I was like, well, what the guy did that, you know, that mm -hmm. set me up making this thing, or maybe it's and then you have people here that do this stuff, right? There's three of us that work in here. Actually, four. Uh, there's one guy 82, one guy 80, I'm 70, and we have a girl, uh, 12. A girl 12? She's, she's the first lady. Yeah, Anna. Oh, wow. She, uh, she hasn't started yet this year. She should be uh -huh. in here. Very nice young lady. She's really into it. She does all kinds of uh, hand work and stuff. So, yeah. <laughs> Now, are these just like whisk brooms? Yes. And the, the other two guys make a lot of stuff. Uh, one guy makes all the spoons. He's got one of the best uh, freehand spoon makers in America. And another guy makes all the stuff. I made almost all the stuff. Mm -hmm. Wood turnings, wood uh, boxes, and stuff. The, a bit, it's called a Furwood bit. And what it this is the latest in high tech for uh, wooden uh, drill bits. Mm -hmm. And so you have this screw on here where it pulls it into the wood, and then you have a, a 
an edge on here so it spirals out. Basically, this is a plane, a spiral plane. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then it's got a tang on either side to make a nice clean cut on that hole. Now, before that, they had all kinds of different drill bits, and they all worked some better than others. You know? mm -hmm. but, but the guy who made this, so the story goes, was like in the 1870s, I think, in upstate New York. I think upstate New York City thing is not New York City. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But anyway, uh, he patented this. But the problem was the guy was a notorious alcoholic. And he had this big uh, bar bill built up in this tavern where he did his drinking. Well, one day he came in with this and the, uh, the, the papers for the patent. And he talked to the tavern owner. And he said, uh, hey, I'll tell you what. If you'll forgive my bar bill, give me $20.00 and a bottle of whiskey, I'll give you the patent to this drill bit. And the guy in the tavern, you know, he was probably thinking, I don't need this, you know, what am I going to yeah. do? With? But the, am I going to get paid? Probably not, so yeah. what's there to lose here? So he gave the guy 20 bucks, uh, which was probably you know, a lot of money in 1870s. Yeah, um, you know? yeah. good for him. Yeah, and uh, a bottle of whiskey, which in all probability is watered down <laughs> Mm -hmm. And uh, forgave his bar bill, and history doesn't tell us what the bar bill was. Mm -hmm. Right. And he threw it in his drawer, and he had it there for quite some time. And then he went down, down the street to his buddy who had a blacksmith shop. He says, hey, you want to see something dumb? I mean, th this is what I did, and he told the story. You know? uh -huh. And the blacksmith looked at it, he says, hey, he says, do you have 200 bucks? What? He says, no, no, look. He says, this is brilliant. He says, I've got a blacksmith shop. I've got the tech. You know the technical skills. Uh -huh. I can make these, but I need about two hundred bucks to buy some special equipment to, mm -hmm. to do the job. You have the rights to it, so we can split fifty-fifty. And go, oh, well, in for a penny, in for a pound. Yeah. He came up with two hundred bucks, gave to the guy, and they started producing these. And there's been hundreds of millions of these made. They made a fortune over time. Yeah. All from a guy that couldn't pay his bar bill. Yep. <laughs> and I'll show you another little thing to know. Stamp here, but not okay. I'll get you another one as well. This one depends how old they are. Ah, okay, if you look at these drill bits, there's always a number stamped in here. Mm -hmm. Okay, this this is 13. I think this one, if I can read it, I don't have my glasses, 16. Yep. Okay, what they did, now they say 3 8 5 you know, whatever the size mm -hmm. is up on here, but they didn't do that back then. So you say, give me a 13, give me a 14. This is the size of the drill bit in 16 of an inch. Okay. So that's 13 16. 16. So if you see an 8, what size is that? 13 16? 18 16? 8, 8 Eight sixteenths, which is half inch. Because it says four. Right. It is four sixteenths, which is a quarter of an inch. Mm -hmm. Usually they go three sixteenths up to an inch. Right. So it's three, four, five, six, eight. Oh, cool. And I've got a, a set, a complete set, uh, that I got at an antique store for 50 bucks. The mm -hmm. guy brought it in, he didn't know what it was. So mm -hmm. and they, they were brand new in the box, had never been used, probably made back in the 40s or 50s, mm -hmm. I think. So it wasn't an antique. That's cool. But the technology is the same. same. Nothing yeah. had changed. So I got those and cleaned a little bit of rust and I just wiped it off. And I got this nice complete set and it's got all, all three, four, five, six, seven, all the way up to 16. Now they just put them in a handle or? No, uh, they came in, a, in a, a little flip top box. I mean, how do you use them? Oh. Oh, you got one of those, Rick? Yeah, it's a brace. Okay. And then you go in here and you just, uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, he's got one of those at home. Oh. I'm put on this here. Now, whenever we do this, we always don't do like I just did. We just put a sacrificial piece on it. So you don't drill into your table. So you don't drill into your table. And then when you get to the piece below, then you stop. And after a while, you have to replace the piece. Right. Thank you. This learned a lot today. Okay, this is a shave. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay, this is a shave horse. And it's a foot-operated vice. Because if you're going to be a decent woodworker, you have to have three hands. Right. 
And so I can show these and put my under here, or if I want to build this up a bit, I can put it. It's your, your comfort. Mm -hmm. It's like push with my feet. Now I've got two free hands. So I can use a spoke shave. You've probably okay. used this yeah. before. Let me get a close up of that so people can see it. Okay. Okay, thank you. And then, so I can hold this. And follow, just release my feet, turn it. And back again. It's so I can make a handle or, mm -hmm. or if you're shaving spokes. Right. Uh, Use this guy here. Go ahead and have, have a seat and uh, use it yourself. Have you used a spoke shave before? No, I never have. Ah, they're a little bit tricky to use. Basically, this is the first cousin to a plane. Okay. Only instead of going end to end, you're going side to side. side. But there's a trick to this. Is let it lay forward on, on, its, on its front. Okay. Okay, you don't want to muscle it. Just let it lay forward, and you're using these... These fingers just go along for the ride. Mm -hmm. So, you yeah. so yeah, okay, go ahead and then push down, push with your feet. Just let it lay forward, and then one more. And like a plane, you kind of want to go at an angle, so you're slicing. So okay. The body is your cut. And once, once you, once you do it uh, right one time, you'll have it for life. Oh, you got your natural. Okay. Go ahead and release your release. Your, let's just turn on the side. Okay. Okay, let's say you're making a handle and you're trying to round that. Oh, it works rather quickly, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. It's already rounding it. Yeah, our, our uh, spoon maker is kind of, he's a uh, spoke shave connoisseur. Uh -huh. And he has about 30 of them in his uh, work box. Oh, wow. And he'll use like two of them for about 90% of what he's doing. Mm -hmm. And then the other one's just a, a little bit, but the they're always at work when he needs it. Yep. Okay, just for kicks, try, this, this is... This is what we call hogging off. You know, if you're hogging. just doing a big, heavy, coarse job, mm -hmm. try this guy. So basically, it, it, it the doesn't principle. do a nice job. It just takes off chunks. Oh, it just takes off chunks. Yeah. Oh, you take off the chunks of this, and then use that for the fire. Yeah, and then you move down. Then yeah. Down. If you get a good edge on these, you, you've learned how to use them. Mm -hmm. You can get a glass finish on there. Oh wow! I can see that. Huh? That's pretty neat. But you, you'll never do it that good with sandpaper. Mm -hmm. This is kind of funny. You know what, Rick? What? This is stuff you love. We came here for my birthday, and it ended up being a birthday present for you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. In fact, this is, oh, yeah, for both of this us. is the second day this one has been here. I, I made this in my garage last week oh, to, cool. to replace this one. Mm -hmm. I had some bunch of walnuts. You know, we've been talking about it for a long time. Mm -hmm. So this one we want to move out and sell to somebody. You know, they want to, you know, if anybody's got uh, 250 bucks, they can take it out and they can haul it out of here. And, We'll help him yeah. Which is really super. Oh, great. Now he's going to be thinking about that. 250 bucks is like that. But yeah, they're, they're great. And the lady that runs the, uh, the dress shop next mm -hmm. door is the wife of one of the guys that works in here. So all her seat coverings and stuff, like, like you know, she made them for yeah. so, so kind of. Well, hey, well why not, why thank have, you so much. I have a really nice yeah. set of a. Uh, I agree with you. Yeah. So, and she's a professional. Mm -hmm. um, she's been making uh, historic costumes for people mm -hmm. as a profession yeah. for about 50 years. So you know, oh, cool. Victorian dresses. Yeah. You know, you know with the big, one of these dresses that where you have, does this dress make my butt look fat? Yeah. Yep. Yep. It does. <laughs> it sure does. That, that she's the one you go to. She's okay. really, really good. Well, thank you. So.